Right. Okay. Well, welcome. This is December 11th, 2022, and I'm Mark Hopkins, associate pastor from Extended Hands, and I'm here today for uh, Pastor Gus, who does the truck stop ministry in Wilcox, Arizona. And so welcome. Let's pray. Father, we just are so grateful. We thank you that you are our blessing in every way and that you are our good. Everything good within us and around us is from you. And we are so grateful. And we thank you for your heart toward us. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, today... So, uh, today, um, some of the scripture I'm going to use, uh, if you read your Bible on a fairly regular basis, a lot of this should be familiar to you, but it doesn't hurt to hear it. And if you don't, you really need to hear it. So, to start off, I want to tell you, the most important thing you can do, period, ever, is to give your attention to the Word of God. Amen. In fact, this is a person in print form. We talk about knowing God. We talk about the Father. Actually, three persons. The Father, the Son, and their Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Father and the Spirit of the Son. But this is God in print form, the person of God. So if you want to spend time with the person of God, learn to spend it here, and then you will spend it otherwise, dwelling with him with your spirit. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So let's go to Matthew chapter 7. going to look at verse 24 and a little bit further on. So if this is the person, and these are, this is, these are red letter words right here. This is Jesus speaking. And he's talking to you and I and fairly familiar to many people who've read their Bibles, but, but let's listen a little differently maybe this time. Whoever hears these sayings of mine, says the living God, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. How many of you would like to have your whole life founded on an immovable rock? Yes. Right? Amen. Good. That's most of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the verse goes on, verse 26, but everyone who hears these things, sayings of mine literally hears what the Word of God says, the person of God in print form, and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. So we've got night and day right there, good or bad, plain as, plain as can be. Right that's, that's what uh, God said right there about it. So moving on. So, according to this, every day we should be doing three things. Number one, we come to Jesus in printed form, hear his words, number two, and number three, become doers of those words. Because it literally said we have to do them to get the lot, 
the house, our life, built on that immovable rock. So, and you know what? Those of you here today and those of you listening, look, watching online, you should be coming to hear from him, not me. I'm just a conduit today. I'm just here to pass on his words. He's the one we're coming to hear those valuable, valuable words of the living God from. So, now, I want to give you a truth. Listen carefully. We have a greater need to feed, to supply, to support our spirits, our spirit within us, than we do our material, our emotional, or our physical life. Because our material, emotional, and physical life will be a, a byproduct brought on by what we put in our spirit, what we feed our spirit, what we supply and support our spirit with. So that's why this, this personal intimate relationship with the person of God in print is so important. That's why we need to engage in this and practice engaging in this and it will start to affect us. It will start to place the house of our life on that immovable rock instead of on the sand and get washed away. And so it's the difference between no fall or a great fall. So says Jesus. Okay, now we're going to get down to the core here. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to go to verse, start in verse 8 of 1 Peter chapter 3. Finally, everybody likes to hear finally in a sermon, right? <laughs> we're going to start off with it though. But this is a short message today. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling. We're going to talk about evil in a little bit. But reviling <coughs> is just blaming each other for things. We all start that when we're little kids, right? It's their fault. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. And we carry that on throughout the rest of our lives if we're not careful. We start finding blame, blaming someone else for everything that happens to us. When we are the ones who actually have been empowered. We're going to talk about what the Word of God says about that a little bit, too. So... The rest of that is, but on the contrary, blessing. We're supposed to be about blessing, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that you were called to this. What were we called to? To deal with blessing. Not evil, not blame, reviling. That we may inherit a blessing. Okay, so this is all about being a blessing, speaking a blessing, and inheriting a blessing. And he is the blessing. This mm -hmm. person in print that we get to know and then we spend our life with. So we're going to come back to that scripture. Um, well, well, we'll carry it on just a little bit more. Verse 10 says, For he who would love life and see good days. How many of you want to love life and see good days? Amen. That was Amen. most of you. Good. All of us. Good. <laughs> that was all of you in this room. Hopefully yes. it's all of you out there too. So, because that's really what this is about. God is so good. He wants us to love our life. And to have, see good days. And this is a choice we have. 
In fact, if we go to John 10, 10, we're going to come back to 1 Peter 3 in a little bit, but John 10, 10, should be fairly familiar with most believers. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Who's the thief? Satan, the devil. See, anything bad, bad days don't come from God. Lack of life, love for our life does not come from God. It comes from your enemy. The rest of it says, I, Jesus speaking here, the person of God in print here, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Some versions say overflowing. Life overflowing. That's pretty good stuff. You see, it's God's idea that we have good days. That we love our life and have good days. And we need to set our faith on the promise of good days. In fact, you know, if you get to be really, really old, <laughs> I'm 65. Some people think I'm really, really old. But I'm just a, a, a young man no in God's eyes, right? So, but think about it. We're talking about years. But years are just made up of 12 months, right? And a month is just made up of a few weeks. And a week is just made up of a few days, seven days, right? We're talking about, so, so really, any kind of life is just a day, followed by a day, followed by a day, followed by a day. And in our case, God's heart for us is a good day, followed by a good day, followed by a good day followed by a good day so that we can love our life when we spend it with him. That This is his plan. This is his will, right? In fact, we want to be in his will. Well, it says right there, that's his will over in 1 Peter. You may inherit a blessing for he who would love life and see good days. He's trying to get us to that. And we're going to read some more in a little bit because he's going to tell us what we, the kind of things we need to do to fulfill those good days. So if we set our faith on this, you guys know how faith comes, right? Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing of the word of God. Okay. I'm going to flip over to James 2 real quick because uh, starting in verse 14 and we're just going to pick through here instead of read this whole thing but it says what does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith see because we have to apply some faith to this right mm -hmm. someone says he has faith but does not have works can faith save him? Verse 17 and 18 say, Thus also faith by itself, it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Verse 20 says, But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? And verse 26 says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now a couple things about these works. We don't earn anything with works. We receive from God only by faith. But works is the byproduct that we're actually operating in faith, that we're actually walking in faith. And most of those works is what comes out of our mouths. Did you know that's a work? That's the most important work that you can do is speak God's word over you, your life and over others. Amen. That's, that's, that's this walk of faith that we're talking about. The setting our faith 
on good days and love of life with the King of glory. So, you got three choices if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, according to the Word of God. You have three choices. You can have a good day, you can have a great day, or you can have the best day ever. Those are your three choices. Worst case scenario is a good day. This is a choice. This is what God promises if we want to walk in the promise. Okay? So, we're going to go back to the part that uh, in 1 Peter 3, back in verse 9, not return evil for evil. Now, evil throws people off. Oh, evil. You know, evil just means bad. And you know what God says is bad, is evil? We're going to read it. His definition of evil in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. It's quite simple. And most people never think about this. Beware, brethren, speaking to believers here, right? Mm -hmm. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Unbelief is God's definition of evil. Unbelief causes bad days. So what's the opposite? Faith in his word. Faith in his promises. Faith in him. Living and speaking them out. Truth. So, we're going to look at some more scripture. So, that part, it said... Okay, we're going to go to verse 10 again. For he, and this is 1 Peter 3, verse 10. He who would love life and see good days, that's the promise, right? Now here are the things God says. We need to show our faith by working out to inherit these good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. That means... No speaking unbelief. We're supposed to speak God's word. It affects whether we have a good day after a good day after a good day, or a bad day after a bad day or after a bad day, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't get to the good days becoming great days to the best day ever. Proverbs 18.21 says... quote it to you, but I want to read it to you. <clears throat> Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. We literally feed ourselves spiritually by what comes out of our mouth. And it affects our days. We'll look at James chapter 3. James chapter I heard somebody recently talk about they were told as they were growing up to hold their tongue. And they went very visually. <laughs> I hold my tongue. Sometimes we have to almost grab our tongue and stop it from giving us bad days, from giving us something that would cause us to not love our life. Verse 4, James 3, verse 4 says, Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. 
And it's referring to the tongue, because the next verse says, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. It talks about it starting forest fires and things. The tongue is so powerful. What we say, what we speak is so powerful. It will be the difference between whether we receive God's promise or not. Okay? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 16. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16. Something else we need to realize and speak. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We can get this. We can change our mind to the mind of Christ. But it starts with our mouth. And if you doubt that, you need to read that and speak that. I have to do this too. We all have to do this. This is the way we're created to operate. Philippians chapter 2. We'll look at Philippians here. Okay, we're going to look at Philippians 2, verses 14 and 16. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Do all things without complaining and disputing. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as the lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. See, if we drag that back to 1 Peter chapter 3, and we continue on, first we read, let him refrain his tongue from evil, from unbelief. The next one was, and his lips from speaking deceit, that's lies. Do you know if we tell lies, we lie to ourselves? And then, we're then we're deceived, then we're confused. That's where this comes from. And we talked about when we were little kids, right? We learned to blame somebody else. It's your fault, no, it's your fault. We also learned to lie. And so we learn to lie to ourselves. We start to believe it the more we speak it, right? So we should be speaking the truth out of God's word. And we will grow and get strong and have good day after good day after good day after good day. This is God's plan. This is how this is outlined. The next verse, verse 11, 1 Peter 3, verse 11. Let him turn away from evil and do good. That's unbelief. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. You are the righteous if you're born again. You have right standing with God. You are made complete. You are made full in your spirit. But it won't soak out into the rest of your life <clears throat> unless you speak it. Okay? Okay? For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do unbelief. Who speak it, who think it, who live it. We have to take that rudder ahead and use it. 
to do to guide us around, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to give you my uh, Christmas verse. Now, this is in Luke chapter one. Some some of my favorite scripture right here because mm -hmm. it's actually about faith. Because you know the angel of the Lord is talking to Mary here, talking to her about conceiving the Lord Jesus Christ right by the Holy Spirit but he says a couple of things verse Luke chapter 1 verse 37 first with God nothing will be impossible mm -hmm. everybody say that with, with God, God nothing, nothing will, will be, be impossible. impossible that's pretty powerful mm -hmm. when you start to believe that and not unbelieve that the next verse says, Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, referring to herself, let it be to me according to your word. Everybody say that. Let, let it, it be, be unto me, me according, according to, to your, your word. word. You know, when we're meeting with the person of God in print, we need to be saying to him, Let it be unto me as you have said. Amen. This is this is not hard if we start to operate in this. It's only hard because we're so used to not speaking the truth. We speak something other than the truth. And I'm talking to myself too. I'm I'm convicted. I'm I've got to deal with this too. So, a couple more verses. Psalm 141. Psalm 141, verses 3 and 4. Set a guard. This is something, a conversation we need to have with the living God. With the person of God in print as we get our nose in that Bible and start to speak it out of our mouth. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to any unbelief, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. This is how we stay out of that trap. This is how we stay out of that hole. And we this is how we have good day after good day after good day and love our life. This is the promise. But this is what how this God's word says to practice this. And last verse, verse, this is one of my most favorite verses in all of the Word of God. This is Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, what I think about, what I live, what I believe is important, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So powerful. Have these things come out of your mouth. And have a good day after a good day after a good day, which leads to a life that you love. Thank you for your time today, and I pray that this is, this is the blessing that you need because we're supposed to inherit blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Excuse me, but in Psalm 19,